Welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with Colorado's best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so you can make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. Well, it's a great day in Colorado and welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us real estate experts, Rhonda Courtney and Lane Lyon. Rhonda uh, Rhonda and Lane, welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having us. You are welcome. I'm excited to learn from you. Um, and it's really neat to to see collaboration uh, in the wild, right? You know, I mean, you guys are working together in as real estate professionals and you even wrote a book together. So tell us about the book. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate the opportunity. And you know, the one thing that Rhonda and I've learned over the years is that real estate is a wonderful way to make a living. It's also, a, unfortunately, a wonderful way to, um, I don't know, run yourself into the ground, shall we say. And, the, and when Rhonda and I collaborated on this book a couple of years ago, we realized that there were way too many real estate agents who were great at business, not great at taking care of themselves. Mm. And that's really where the uh, the book started. And, and Rhonda, this was really kind of a, a, a mission of yours to, to speak to that. Can you talk about that? So, so Lane and I always talked about writing a book about this business and self-care and taking care of yourself. And we, we didn't have a topic for this book until one night, right, Lane? So the book talks about how in one night, my entire life changed um, the way I ran my business and my personal life. So we ended up getting material from that night and writing this book. The The reality, Mike, is in, in business, when you work really hard, sometimes we found with, with professionals, you can almost hide behind your work. Yeah. And it becomes a real easy excuse to not deal with problems at home, problems with your life. And that's what the book is, is all about. In fact, we call it the survival guide to selling real estate because it is truly about surviving. And, and it really kind of came out of uh, an idea that Rhonda had uh, and has been working on for several years, which is called the Real Estate Support Group. This is a closed Facebook page. Uh, yeah. It has a lot of users. And yeah. the whole idea is that we can together help each other survive. You know, I love that approach. And it reminds me of something I heard recently, and I forget where, but you'll appreciate the context. Um, it was basically talking about this person that um, had a problem with substances, both drinking and drugs, and they came to their senses and and recovered. And then all of a sudden they went head over heels off the deep end in being a workaholic. And so yeah. it's that balance aspect that you're talking about. So it, whether it's real estate or engineering or any industry, but I would I'll always venture to say that this is a really hot topic in your group and probably in your book, which is time management, work, mm -hmm. life balance. Because so many times I hear real estate professionals go, here's my personal cell number. Call me 24 seven. I'm here for you. Well, that might be great that you're there for your clients, but is that really self-care and, and, and good for your own personal uh, side, not to mention professional. So talk a little bit about that concept. And, and if that is a, a topic that you, you teach on. So it, in the book, I talk about that real estate can be an addiction. Being a workaholic is definitely an addiction. And it was for me. Um, so I didn't pay attention to my personal life at all because I only paid attention to my work life. That's it. Um, and it it didn't go well. <laughs> so yeah. I, I wrote a book to help others understand that you you have to balance it. Um, you have to have work, work life balance. When I hear 24 seven, when these agents tell me I, I work 24 seven, I, it, it's like nails on a chalkboard because yeah. I just, I know what that leads to. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's not a good path to be on. And it usually takes one kind of, you know, dose with death, so to speak, a yeah. rock yeah. bottom moment yeah. for everyone. It's different. And when you bounce back, you kind of learn. But and so we really wanted to share those experiences. I know for me, uh, and this is second career, I was a news reporter prior to getting into real estate. I worked really hard. I said yes to everyone. I, wa I was that agent that said, here's my cell, call me day and night. Yeah. And I was the agent that was trying to resolve inspection issues on a cruise at $1.90 
$1.99 a minute on a wow. seat. Wow. Yes, he was. And uh, it was not good. And what I thought at the time was that I was providing great service. Yeah. And in fact, what I learned later and what we talk to agents about all the time is the fact that your clients are looking at you as someone who can't manage your business. When the dentist yes. is out of town, the dentist doesn't work on your teeth while they're on vacation. They set someone up to to work on you when they, or they see you when they get back. And so being able to uh, find that kind of balance is important. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll say one more thing. And that is that for me, I really woke up when I was out with some clients who had recently closed on their new home and we were out for drinks and it was these younger uh, buyer clients of mine that really do everything. They travel the world, they swim with sharks, they climb every mountain out there. And they said, so Lane, what, what do you do for fun? And I said, well, you know, I, uh, I uh, take a couple of cruises a year. And they said, oh, okay, well, that's, those are vacations. What do you do for fun? Well, um, you know, my family's close by. I love living near my family. Okay, those are family visits. That's not fun. And, uh -huh. and Mike, to be honest with you, I could not think of one thing that I do for fun because I work uh, yep. too much. So we really want to reach those agents before they get to a place where they are headed for a heart attack, where they are realizing that um, the work could, should not come first. It's important. We've got to pay our bills. And we've got to take care of our clients. We've got to take care of ourselves and families. And in the, you know, Rhonda also talks about in the book about an agent that she met who sadly um, passed away. He was found dead in his car. And Rhonda knows without a shadow of a doubt that the stress of his business yeah most likely killed him. And that's just not what we want to see in our industry. So I thought of two words when you were describing that. One is Autobahn and one is Tesla. And so here's what here's what I thought of and you can you can go deep on this. Autobahn. Let's say that we could instantly put, press a button and get to the German Autobahn with the fastest car known to mankind and we could just floor it because there's no speed limit and we just kept it floored for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. How long would that engine last? Who knows, but at some point when it's running at, you know, 9000 RPMs, it's going to implode because you can't keep doing that. Same with their bodies. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a doctor, but I'll bet there's a great correlation there. And then um, Tesla, Elon Musk. What if we magically had Elon Musk's cell phone number right now? I'll bet if we dialed it, we're not going to get him to answer the phone because he has boundaries and he has protocols. And that actually puts a barrier around things that are important for him. And you know what that does for him and for us as little you know, business people that we are here in Colorado, that sets us up as being uh, an, uh, literally it sets our, our positioning up. We position ourselves as here for our clients full on, but after a certain time, um, it's going to be the next day. So talk a little bit about those two points that I was thinking about, because I think it really ties in well with the content you cover in your book. Well, I'll tell a story, and this is in the book too. Lane and I were on that cruise together. The difference was I have a team and they covered me, okay? Oh. He was writing the contract in his little cube. I don't even know on the ship how he got that done. <laughs> I don't know. But I I walked by him with my Corona beer laughing at him going, okay, you're working and I've got a team that's covering me. Uh. Okay, so I mean- there is a way that we can have coverage if we let go of some of the control that we all have. Yeah. Um, I've got a TC. I've got a whole team. I take a break. I, but I, it wasn't always like that, Mike. Like I, I worked seven days a week. I was so controlling. I never let anyone do anything for me. And then when my entire life imploded, I, I was just done. I still. Sell and that cost you days. a buck or two to have that team there. But I'll bet if yes. you could translate that to the relief and emotional emotional freedom that you have to not have to do the, you know, doing the, the, uh, uh stuff on the cruise ship. It, oh, it's yeah. like it worth every penny times 10. Well, yeah, because, um, so think about this. What, what is your time worth? Yeah. I mean, my time is worth more than money. I will, I will sacrifice money for my time a hundred percent because when I was making all that money seven days a week and hoarding it all, really, I was miserable, Yeah, miserable. And and it's the hard part, I think, people, when when so many people are getting into commission sales and to business, I don't care if it's real estate or anything else, 
you become so focused on saying yes to everything mm -hmm. because yeah. you, you're out hunting for your own food. And, and maybe until you have the experience to know that um, you've got to put yourself first. It's tough in those early years. You know, Rhonda has over 20 years at Remax. Um, I've been in the business a while and I now am a managing broker at Coldwell Banker. So I'm able to um, do some coaching and mentoring on a daily basis. And what I find is the same story. I'm hesitant to give over control of my uh, parts of my business to people who are competent and capable of helping me. I'm hesitant to say no to clients for fear I'll have no other business again. Mm. And the reality is when they make those changes, when you figure out how to hire people who are smarter than you to do the things you're not the best at, you shouldn't be sending out paperwork and disclosures at 9 p.m. It's no. a yep. sign that you need help. Yeah. You need to bring help in to help your business. And the most successful realtors that we work with. Uh, and Rhonda included in this, are the ones who figure out how to delegate. They give up the control on some of those files. Things get done and they end up having more time. And actually, Mike, to your point, more money in the end because they have the time and energy to go out and find more business. It's amazing. Uh, I've got one agent here at Coldwell Banker who said her business took off and changed when she started saying no to the clients she didn't want to work with. Uh. And so it goes against what we've kind of thought in the early years of we have to say yes to everything. In fact, saying no and bringing in and paying people to do work actually can help you be more successful. And that's what we're really focused on helping people understand. Unbelievably huge concept. I think we can do a three-day weekend seminar just yeah, on that. Yeah, we can. Probably. <laughs> right. and, and then still have like people in the back going, tell us more. Yeah. Um but but you know, that's the beauty of what I think that a book does. And then like your uh Facebook group where it's like, okay, I'm learning these lessons, and then now I'm in this private Facebook group and I can vent, I can, you know, be myself. And I think that's an interesting thing because it becomes something where you know you're not yeah, yeah, your competitors. Because actually, you two literally are competitors. You work for different companies, but you know what? There's enough business for everybody. If we can become one big happy family, and and um, as you guys like to say, be nice to each other. Well, everyone wins. You learn little nuances, and you don't. Lane doesn't have the personal network and professional network that Rhonda does. So everybody is going to have their own little nuances there. So talk a little bit about working uh, with uh, people in the industry. Well, I think I'm kind of one of the first agents that co-lists with other companies. I've got a $24 million ranch listed with Compass. I brought them in on the deal. It's Remax and Compass selling that together because I just didn't feel Interesting. like I know it is. Yeah. It is huge. Um, and I also sold another house in Douglas County and Castle Pines with Compass also. Um, now they're my clients. I brought in Compass because I love their marketing. I think Remax and Compass working together is very strong and it's um it's really good for the seller. Now, if I only focused on money, then I of course I wouldn't do that. I focus on getting the deals done, however, I need to get them done. Um, so it is kind of a interesting concept. And it's one that, that Rhonda is really kind of uh, taking to the next level, if I can kind of uh, promote her a little bit, because I'm such a big fan. But the reality is she has this, this idea that we need to be nice to each other. And there is a wonderful idea that if we work together and we're and Rhonda's the first to say that she will cross those company lines and 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 work with each other. But we will get more done with each other um, if we are finding ways to be respectful, to help our clients over the finish line by working well with the other agent on the deal. Um, Rhonda and I both have worked with professionals who feel like the best way to to be aggressive is to to fight. And to mm -hmm. fight to the closing and fight yeah, to the no. death and show my client that I'm powerful and I'm sticking up mm -hmm. for them, where really they may be doing more harm than good in the end, because that adversarial relationship ends up, you know, becoming quite personal in something that is a very personal transaction, like buying a home. So we found that if we can take that message of really being kind throughout the process, uh, from a negotiation strategy standpoint, um, it just ends up getting people to the closing table faster, 
better. Uh, people are happier. And we're lucky in Colorado, Mike, because I think uh, Coloradans pride themselves on, on being nice to one another. If we can pull more of that into business, I think we'll get more done and, and people will be more successful. Couldn't agree more. In fact, it made me think uh, you guys ought to buy stock in the kind, um, you know, bar company and just buy boxes of those and give them out like candy because it's like yeah. becomes your mantra. It's like, hey, kind of reminds us we need to be this way. But that's really neat. Um, and 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 I think also what you described is something that we can probably go off on a tangent on as well, which is the law of abundance. If we wrap our arms around something so tight that our knuckles are white and we're trying to keep what's ours and keep everyone else away from that, well, what's going to happen? Something. But if we're like, look, there is plenty to have and plenty to help each other, who knows what introduction and what connection and what networking and what group alliance can bring huge deals and huge deals. And I think it's a mindset shift and it really has been paying off as you have been explaining. Absolutely. I, I, um, you know, back to Lane's point, I, I very rarely fight with other agents because I just don't think it's effective. We're on the same team. We got to get it closed. We do. And I tell agents all the time, you need me to extend that date for you? Most likely 100% I'm going to do that uh, because I want them to do that for me sometime. We all need grace in our in our lives. And we never know what that other agent's dealing with in their personal life as well. So I'm just very careful how I treat agents, how I do deals. Their buyer is just as important as my seller. I, I'm not there to fight to win because nobody wins. It's just it, it, you win when you're a good person and you do what's right. And th and that's always been my philosophy in this business. I'll tell you though, Mike, you got to be able to put, check the egos at the door. Absolutely. You can't be jealous. Yeah. You can't be threatened by someone else's experience. You have to truly have your clients, you know, best interests at the forefront uh, when it comes to representing them. It's something we take very seriously. And you know, I know we're getting short on time, but it is it's a message that we want to continue uh, putting out there as much as possible, that one, agents need to take care of themselves and they need to do a, a better job taking care of their clients through uh, just being being nice to one another. Very simple concepts, but it's amazing how emotions can take people down roads that that aren't as productive. Lane, you mentioned uh, that you guys have a closed uh, Facebook group. Is that uh, is that available for people to talk to you guys about maybe getting in that if it's the right fit or tell us more about that know, Facebook group? Talk about that. So okay. Mark, I started um, what's called a real estate support page, and I I actually talk about it in my book too. Um, mm -hmm. I it, it's a it's a page with a lot of agents that you know reach out to me and want to be invited to it, and we talk about you know why is my listing not selling? Can you help me? Uh, who's a good plumber that you use? Who, what electrician has been beneficial for you? It, it, it's, you know, I, nice. I, oh, yeah, I only allow yeah. agents on there that are willing to help other agents. That's sure. it. Like if they're not, I, I, I just don't, I don't support that. So if they're takers, they're not invited. No, they're not Mark. <laughs> Gotta I be givers. Can't deal with that. <laughs> yep. Yep. We agree with that. It kind of, so, it sounds like a recurring thread. Let's be givers. Let's give value. Let's work together. Let's be kind to each other. There's plenty to go around. And when we can do that, we all win. I think that is such a huge, um, you know, literally crusade you guys are on. I love what you're talking about. And if anyone listening to this is interested in picking up a copy of your book and checking out that Facebook group, what's the best way they can reach out and find out more? Well, uh, the book is called The Survival Guide to Selling Real Estate. You can find it on Amazon. You can also listen to it as well on Audible. And uh, we'll make sure that we get all of the information over on, on where people can find it. Uh, and the Facebook page is called The Real Estate Support Group. Well, guys, thank you so much, Lane and Rhonda. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for your time today. Thank, thank you, you, Mike and Mark. Thank you for listening to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.coloradorealestateleaders.com.